Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, so we're going to be looking at problems 11 and 18 in Larson and Edwards, the textbook we're using for this multivariable calculus course. Uh, problem 11 is uh, max has to do with the maximization of the volume of an ellipsoid, which if you think about it, is just the elongation of a sphere along uh, one direction or another. Um, so in the problem, they give us the implicit equation of an ellipsoid uh, in terms of three variables, x, y, and z. And uh, in this pro uh, they also give us the equation of the volume of this ellipsoid, which in terms of a, b, and c is equal to 4 thirds pi a, b, c. They also give us some e expression, which is the sum of these major and minor uh, axes. Uh, values and I just set them equal to k, um, which, which is just some arbitrary constant. And the first thing we're going to do here in step three, see if I can scroll down a little bit, is solve for c in terms of a, b, and k. So I've just subtracted a and b from the left hand side to the right. And the next thing we want to do is substitute this into uh, two up above that the problem gave us. And we find that the volume in terms of ABK is 4 thirds pi AB times K minus A minus B. And then in five, I've simply distributed the AB through the parentheses. Um, now we're gonna find our partial derivatives because we wanna find our critical points. So the first partial derivatives uh, are with respect to A and with respect to B that I've denoted with subscripts uh, are simply bk minus 2ab minus b squared, and I've set it equal to 0, find our critical points. And for the second one, ak minus a squared minus 2ba. And uh, I've crossed out the 4 pi on 3, because it's just a constant that's acting on all, all three of our terms, and so it's really unnecessary. Uh, next, we have two equations and two unknowns in 7 and 9. So we can solve for a and b in terms of um, k. So in 10, I've simply found a in terms of b, and in 11, 12, 13, and 14, I've substituted this into 9 up above here, and I found that b is equal to k on 3. So since we know what b is, we can substitute that back in to 10 up here, and we find that k is, or that a is also k on three. Um, so now we know what a and b are. We know that a and b are both k on three. But we said above that c, in terms of k, a, and b, uh, is number three here. c equals to k minus a minus b. That's the relation. So we can substitute what we know for a and b into this equation, and we find down here that I found in 16 and 17 that C is also equal to K on 3. It's kind of interesting the way this problem worked out. And we so we see, uh, I, I rewrote the step, so we see in 18 that A equals B equals C equals K on 3. So we found that all of the axes, all of the distances from the ax along the axes must be the same to have the, uh, the maximum volume for a given constant K. Uh, so I, I guess we could think of the sphere uh, as a sphere, uh, as a special case of an ellipsoid where all of the uh, distances along the axes happen to be the same and the, the volume is maximized within the, vo within the sphere. So now we're going to hop over, because I've, I've shown this analytically, we, we're going to hop over to uh, question 18. I've written up another HTML page for this. Uh, just a quick HTML page, uh, nothing special. Uh, I just use MathJax to render all of the equations. Uh, it's really not too difficult. And then, um, so this problem deals with uh, the Shannon Diversity Index, which uh, I did a bit of research and I found that it could be general generalized to uh, an equation that looks like this. In the problem, they only give us three variables. Uh, here I'm going to call all of these variables some p sub k, where k is some uh, natural number. 
so if we have n species in a given area and we want to find uh, a diversity index associated with a given area uh, if we had say if we had 45 species well then we'd have an equation with 45 variables and those 45 variables would have to be those 45 piece of k's would have to be percentages of those uh, species in a given area and so our constraint or we could think of it as a constraint all of our percentages have to equal one so uh, in this problem like I said we we have three variables we have three species in some area some arbitrary area and uh, so we can get this out of summation we find that p sub 1 log p1 minus p sub 2 log p2, p sub 2 minus p sub 3 log p sub 3 so we've just uh, attached a log uh, to the end of all of our percentages and now we want to maximize our diversity index. So what values of p could possibly maximize the diversity index that we get for a given area? And uh, so from uh, uh, our constraint above, we know that the sum of all of these percentages has to equal 1. And uh, we're, well, we're going to solve for p sub, p sub 3 in terms of the other two, p sub 1 and p sub 2, which I've shown down here in step 4. And uh, using this equation, we can substitute in for p sub 3 into three up here and we find a, uh, another equation for a Shannon diversity index but in terms of two variables instead of three so we can come back to that third variable later after we've maximized well after we've worked with our, our, our two variables here so we're gonna take the partial derivative of our diversity index with respect to these two percentages and we find uh, after some simplification I work these out ahead of time that all of our uh, that our partial uh, derivatives simplified to just logarithms of uh, quotients and we set them equal to zero because we want to find our critical points and then we take the exponential of either side and we find that e to the zero is one which I've written here in seven on the right hand side and on the left hand side the log just disappears of course and then we solve for p1 in terms of p sub 2 and the same thing happens down here in 9, 10, and 11, but we solve for P2 in terms of P1. So we, again, as in the last problem, have uh, two equations and two unknowns, so we can solve for these. Um, so we find after substituting 8 into 11 up here, from up here, uh, that um, P sub 2 is equal to 1 third. And then substituting this P sub 2 back in, we also find that p sub 1 is equal to 1 third. And then, based on our constraint up here, p sub 1 plus p sub 2 plus p sub 3 equals 1, we could substitute our p sub 1 and p sub 2 in, and we find that p sub 3 is also 1 third, which is in 16 here. And that sums up part A of the problem, but we also want to uh, show analytically that the maximum value of our diversity index can possibly be log of 3. Um, just a quick note, all of the logs I write are base e. I, I, I don't typically write ln, but uh, just to uh, uh, get rid of any confusion, uh, prevent any confusion about what I'm saying, uh, all of my logs are assumed to be base e. So they're all natural logs in a sense. Um, so in 17, I've just uh, thrown in all of our p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3s, which are all the same, 1 thirds. And then I pulled the 1 third out in 18. And then we can combine all of these logarithms in the next step because uh, the sum of two logs is just the product of whatever they're logging, <laughs> I guess. And um, then we can pull that negative 1 third in as an exponent. And that gives us our log of 1 third. So... Uh, yeah, so we've proved uh, uh, analytically part, part B of this problem.